Hello, everybody, and welcome to this class. My name is Birgit Koopsten, and I'm a brand ambassador for Jelly Arts. And I am in the Netherlands, where it's currently 8 p.m. Um, today, I'm going to teach a class about printing with uh, products found in nature, which is basically um, botanicals and feathers. And um, before I forget uh, to mention it, we have two more upcoming classes that are already available to register for on the Michael's website. The first one is on, oh, let me check, July 25th, which will be uh, a premium class taught by me about uh, image transfers. So that's image transfers from uh, magazine, pictures and books. And then there is a class already uh, on the website on August 29, which will be taught by my fellow brand ambassador, Marcia Falk. And she is going to teach you, it's a free class about printing on fabric and how to create your own custom made patterned fabric for quilting and all kinds of other um, fabric uh, use. So that's it. Uh, let's turn the camera to my workspace and then we can start with this class. So uh, I'm going to print today on my five by seven inch uh, gel printing plate and I have two plates because uh, first I will show you how you can print with acrylic paint and then I will print uh, show you how you can print using archival inks. And um, I have a plate dedicated to alcohol inks and other printing inks because uh, alcohol ink and um, like uh, dye inks, like archival inks are um, pigments and in a way that they actually color your, uh, your printing plate and I, uh, your gel plate. I will show you what it looks like. So this is how yellow my plate is. So the inks stained the plate. It does not affect the, how the plate works. It does not affect my prints. It's not uh, coming off and making colors look differently. It's just that my plate is yellow. So um, I have one plate dedicated to the inks. So my other plates stay nice and clean. So I have another one here that I am going to use for uh, acrylic paint. So, oh, I didn't clean that. That happens a lot to me. I don't usually clean my plates because I actually really like um, leftover paint on the plate to show up in my, um, in my future prints because uh, it gives a bit of a distress distressed look and uh, the prints the prints don't look as clean as when you start with a clean plate and um, I personally really like that maybe you saw that I took uh, my plate from between two sheets of uh, copier paper so I always store my plates between copier paper because uh, then you avoid air bubbles. If you put your plate between um, the acetate sheets, then you will might get air bubbles, which make uh, an impression in the plate. Uh, and that will also show up on your, uh, on your print. So it's better to store your plate between copier paper. So just before um, we started this class, I just went into my backyard and collected some stuff. And you really don't need any fancy flowers or you don't need to go to the flower store and get really, really nice flowers. You can just um, collect something that's in your backyard or even on the side of the road. If you have a, a tree with some leaves, if you have some, even some weeds or some um, herbs that you might be um, growing in your garden or maybe even in your kitchen, you can use them. Uh, and I also found some feathers. So for the feathers, I have to say there are some countries or parts of countries where you are not allowed to collect feathers. So if you want to use um, feathers that you find outside, you have to check in your area if you are allowed to take them. So if you're not allowed to take them, you can buy feathers. You can actually buy feathers uh, at Michael's and um, so then you can use those for your 
for your printing if you want to use them. But um, here in the Netherlands, I can just pick these up as long as they are like not from protected birds. And um, so I just take them home and use them for printing. So first I'm going to print with acrylic paint and I'm going to print on cardstock paper. So this is a cardstock paper that's available at Michael's. And it's a little bit heavier than a uh, regular copier paper. And I really like um, the little bit heavier paper if I want to make, for instance, cards or if I want to use my uh, prints as backgrounds for art journaling or stuff like that. And if I want to use my prints for um, collage material, for instance, then I would take uh, like a random, um, like a general copier paper, a thinner top copier paper, or even um, tissue paper, the kind of tissue paper that you find in a shoe box or something like that. Because the tissue paper, when you glue it down uh, on a background, it will turn completely translucent. And so you will only see um, the paint and the print on your background and not the paper. I actually think I have a sample here, yeah. So here is a print, and I hope it's clear, um, that I made with feathers on tissue paper using archival ink. So there are some areas um, that are, or most of the areas are translucent because the ink is translucent. And I print it on tissue paper. So when you glue it down with, for instance, a matte medium, like... Um, uh, Liquitex matte medium, also available at Michael's, a matte medium like Liquitex, which is a fluid uh, matte medium, which works a little bit better than a soft body because this spreads really easily. You see that uh, you can clearly still see all the words and the uh, music notes shining through the print as if it was printed directly on the, uh, on the music paper, but it's actually glued on there. So that's really a good um, benefit of printing on tissue paper. But my prints now, the first prints I'm going to make on this cardstock, I have also a sheet of this cardstock underneath my gel plate, uh, which allows me to line up my paper. So if I want to do uh, a couple of uh, prints on top of each other, I can line up my paper with the paper underneath the gel plate and uh, to make sure that I always get the paper in the right position. So let's start. Um, I'm going to use my soft rubber brayer from Speedball and um, some acrylic paint from my paints are from Liquitex. The ones that I'm using today are from Liquitex or from Winsor & Newton. Uh, both also available uh, from Michaels. So let me pick some colors. Uh, some favorite colors. And roll them out. And let me see, I'm going to start with some little leaves. Uh, let's do a variety of leaves. So when you pick your leaves, um, the thicker the veins are, the more detailed your prints will be. Because if you have uh, a, like a really smooth surface, there will not be a lot of detail in your print. But if you have like really thicker areas that will pick up more paint than the, um, the, the areas that are a little bit lower, then you will get more details in your print. So that's something that you can uh, look for when you're picking um, your, your leaves and your little uh, flowers and stuff like that. Um, but in general, most um, leaves will give nice prints. So I'm just going to take a couple of different ones. Yeah. So I'm not sure, I think I used uh, a silhouette or something there. Something funny may, might show up and I pull the print, but we'll see. 
So I'm just going to roll out these colors and I'm very randomly going to move my grayer around so I get um, a mix of these colors. But I don't want to grayer too much because then I will just end up with one new solid color and I actually want uh, a bit, uh, I don't want the solid color. I want still to be able to see the different colors that I put on my plate. So I have to be a bit careful. Don't use too much paint. If you have like a really thick layer of paint on your plate, it's better to roll off some of that paint um, and roll it out on some uh, uh, scrap paper. Because uh, if you have too much paint on your plate, your leaves will not be able to pick up that paint and you will not get like a really nice impression. Um, so a thinner layer is always better than a thick layer. And I'm just going to make sure that I have some leaves all over, all around the plate, all areas. Um, like this. Now I'm going to take my sheet of paper and I'm going to line it up with the paper underneath my plate. And so now I'm going to print the area that is around um, the leaves. And because it's uh, obviously not picking up the paint that's underneath the leaves. So I have to make sure that I go into the open areas with my fingers and rub firmly because otherwise I will lose the, um, the outlines, the edges of the, uh, of the leaves and I will end up with white, uh, white spaces, which I don't want. So let's check. So, here we go. It's coming off a little bit hard there because of the color that was underneath. So now I have the outline of my uh, of my leaves. And what I'm doing now is I'm taking away the leaves. And as you can see underneath, you have uh, all the details of the leaves. And what I can do now is line it up again and print in the open areas. So in this case, the colors of my leaves will, are, will be the same colors as the color um, around the leaves, the background color. And there we go. And as you can see, uh, a lot of details are in there. You can see, especially in this leaf here also, and this one came out really nice, um, very detailed, all the, all the things in there. So that's one way to do it. So you put the leaves, basically you put the leaves back into the open areas and because the leaves uh, took some of the paint from the plate, it will give you the pattern and um, you can just uh, print color into the same color. But you can also choose to print on a different color background. So that's the next one I'm going to do. And I'm uh, going to clean my plate. I can take a uh, baby wipe now, but I can also just um, make a print to remove the paint from my plate. So this color on here is um, dried paint. So when I put my paper on there, it will not pick up the paint as you can see. But I can add uh, some paint, a thin layer of paint and I'm using white now, but I can use any color I like. And I have no idea how well this will come out because sometimes it looks as if there's hardly any paint left on the plate and you actually get a really nice print and sometimes you feel like it's going to be beautiful and then it's just uh, a bunch of colors and no details at all. But we'll see. 
a really, really thin layer because a thick layer is not picking up dried paint from the plate. If you use a thick layer of paint, you will only pick up the top layer and not, it will not be strong enough to pick up the, uh, the paint that's dry underneath. So if I have the right amount of paint to pick up the dried paint from the plate, then my plate will be clean because I will be picking up all of the leftover paint or at least as good as clean and uh, clean enough to make a new print. So here we go, almost clean and a little bit of a print. But this is a really uh, good print to print a little bit more on and um, add some. I can do uh, more leaves on top of this and ma uh, make it look really nice. Actually, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to print on this on this paper and see, just see what comes out. So I'm going to use, um, what do you think? Maybe a green. The green on top of pink is might be really nice. And I'm also going to add a little bit of bright aqua. And roll it out again. I need a new sheet of paper. So I use my scrap paper uh, a lot of times before I turn it into collage paper, uh, but you can't roll off your brayer on like really wet paper. So if you have like really wet paint on here, then it's not good to uh, keep using it to roll off your brayer. And then I just change my sheets of paper. And then when um, the scrap paper that I used is dry. I will just put it back on the on the stack and um, use it again until there's a lot of layers of color that I can use in um, art journaling or for cards or whatever I want to do um, collage on. So I'm going to take some scrap paper now, actually, to remove the color around the leaves because right now I only want the uh, the print of the leaves and not the surrounding area. And again, I have to make sure that I remove all of the paint that's between the leaves. Otherwise I will end up with dots of paint, blobs of paint between the leaves on my, uh, on my new print. And um, I have no idea how this will turn out. That's the fun part, I think, of gel printing that you can't always predict how something will work out. This is not too bad for, uh, for a start. So there was the green already from cleaning my brayer and now the outline of the leaves, which is also a nice beginning for more layers. But this is the print that I want and I'm just going to print right on top of this one and see what comes out of it. And if it doesn't come out the way you hoped or expected, you can always add more layers. You can always keep adding layers until uh, you like what you get. I kind of like what, the, what I get here. I might um, add even another layer because I think there are still quite some open areas. So yeah, let's just add another layer. Let's add a permanent rose and some a little bit darker, a little bit a magenta. And I'm just going to mix these two.
And uh, I think I'm not going to fill it completely with leaves. I'm just going to kind of eyeball the areas where I, where I want some leaves. So when I uh, are, are doing the print, will be doing the print, I'm going to turn it around. So uh, if I want the leaf here, I actually need it on this side of the plate. And if I want the leaf there, I actually need it on this side of the plate. Does that make sense? Because um, you get it reversed when you do the printing. So let's put one here. Let's put something up here and down here and maybe a small one somewhere here in the middle. And again, I'm going to use my scrap paper to remove all the paint in between the leaves. At least I'm trying to. I might have used a little bit too much paint because there's still quite a lot on the plate. So I'm going to take another sheet of paper and try. Hopefully this stays in the right position to remove, to remove a little bit more. So if your paper, your scrap paper that you're using to remove the paint is uh, very wet already, it will just simply not pick up um, more paint. So you need a new sheet, a dry sheet of paper to remove any more paint. Now I'm going to remove these. And I'm going to print on top of this one. So here we go. And another layer. That's fun. That's kind, almost kind, uh, like kind of a collage, uh, leaf collage. So these two prints were made with um, wet paint. And now I'm going to show you one where I leave the paint to dry on the plate and then use different colors to pick up um, the impressions of the leaves. So uh, let me put this one aside. Uh, there are some little parts left on here from the leaves. It's not a big problem, but um, let me see. I want to print with these, make a nice composition. Oh, there's a tiny little spider here. Okay, you can go back. Come on, you can go back into the, there. Okay, I'm going to use this one and um, uh, maybe this one. And put one up here. So I often make um, a composition before I actually roll out the paint and have a look at what I need and how much I want to use. So I already have it lying there before I put on the paint because otherwise uh, I might need too much time uh, picking the right flowers and the right leaves and my paint will dry. So I think this is about what I want. So I'm going to put this aside and now I'm going again for the magenta and maybe some, let me see, do I have some hot red here? I don't think I have this to add or no. Then how about uh, purple? Mm. 
not my favorite color, but okay. Let's just go for it. I'm pretty sure there will be at least one person watching who really likes purple. So if you're the one, this one is for you. <laughs> um, okay. This one so goes here. Birgit, Birgit, while you're doing that, somebody asked if the stems are hard and woody, could it damage the plate? Uh, no, not really. It's, uh, it, it really, something really has to be very sharp to actually damage the plate. So it's very, um, I don't know the English word. Um, oh, it's, it's very, very sturdy. Forgiving. Those plates are very sturdy. They are. And um, so they, the, it might actually kind of push into the plate, but it will come back. It will not, um, the impression will not stay in the plate unless you put something heavy on here and leave it on for a day or two, then you will actually see the impression in the plate and it will take a, a while before it comes, bounces back. But uh, in general, you can put quite a lot on there without ever damaging it. Um, so now I'm just going to take scrap paper again to remove the paint around my, um, around my, leaves and again especially with the little branches I have to be careful to remove the paint all of the paint between because otherwise your leaves will become bigger because you don't take away the edges and also the little stems here you have to make sure that you remove all of that paint um, and I still need to take away some here. I think this is okay. So I'm just going to remove these and now this paint needs to dry because I want to pick this up with different colors of paint. Um, I could have just um, printed a background uh, in, for instance, yellow and um, a light blue or something and then print on top of that. But I really like how it looks when you put uh, different colors of uh, paint on top of dry paint and then pull that print. It has, it is a, sp a specific, uh, it has a specific look and I really like that. So I have to wait a little bit for this to dry. So meanwhile, let me pick the colors that I want to use to pick up this. I think this one will look good with it and uh, some yellow and maybe some white in between to make the colors blend nicely. Uh, that is still too wet. So I have to wait a little bit. Uh, meanwhile, I might show you something else. Um, so for instance, this one, this is a fun one to show because I really like this print, but this is um, a cleanup print. So I had some paint already on my, uh, my cleanup paper, imagine something like uh, this, like just random paint that I rolled off with my brayer. And then I use that sheet of paper to do what I just did here. Remove um, the paint that is in between of the leaves and the branches. And this is what came out. So this was not my intention. This is what uh, I call happy, happy. It's not an accident, but it's not like I planned on uh, making a nice print, but it turned out to be a nice print. At least that's my opinion. And I like it the way it is, but you could also take, for instance, uh, a white or black pen and doodle in here and put the branches in there and, um, and add something to it. This doesn't have to be the final 
uh, products. So you can always, always add, um, you don't have to do everything with printing. You can always come back with different products with pens and stamps and um, collage or whatever on top of this to, to actually finish it. So let me see if my talking was long enough for this to dry. I think we're safe to, to do this now. Okay, so, but while you're doing that, somebody just asked, do you ever work on multiple plates at a time so you can keep playing while allowing the paint to dry? Yeah, I sometimes, sometimes I do that. And uh, because I'm, this is not coming off, because I'm really not a very patient person. I don't like to sit around and watch paint dry. So I, I do do that. Um, and I have quite a lot of plates so I can uh, work on several plates at the same time. When I'm working with, with acrylic paint, I don't do it that much because the acrylic paint um, dries pretty fast. The one that I'm using, the Liquitex and the Winsor Newton, Newton, they dry pretty fast, especially when you work with like really thin layers. Um, but when I work with, for instance, alcohol ink or slow drying dye inks or stuff like that, or when you use like a golden open or something that is uh, like drying really, really slow, then I do uh, print on several plates at the same time because uh, alcohol ink, you really have to, uh, to wait several minutes for it to dry or sometimes even 10 or 15 minutes if you use uh, a lot. So that's not something that I want to wait for. And then I work on, on several plates. So I'm going to roll out this paint. And again, it has to be a really thin layer because I really want to pick up everything that's on the plate. So I'm going to pick it up straight away. Um, I'm missing a bit of color. The green and the yellow are too similar. So I'm are you adding a little bit of um, bright aqua? Because I like color. So, and hopefully I will now pick up everything. So I'm going to pick it up right away because again, we don't want to sit around and wait. But if I want to, if I would want to be absolutely sure that I pick up everything from this plate, I could wait for a couple of minutes, like four or five minutes for the paint to dry. And when I remove the paint from the plate, when everything is completely dry, I will be sure to pick up everything that's on there and have a clean plate and everything in my print. It is a little bit harder when you do it while the paint is still wet, because then it's really, really important how much paint you put on there. So if you have a hard time getting the right amount of paint, then you might want to wait a little bit longer before pulling it. But I think I'm actually getting a really good pull here. And there we go. So this is what it looks like when you uh, pull. Um, dried paint from the plate. And as you can see, my plate is completely clean now and ready for the next print. And so this might not be the most beautiful print, but let me show you one that I did with this technique that I like a little bit more. So this is one that I really like, uh, but that's probably because of the colors. And this is like really random weeds from the side of the road that's you would probably normally just pass by and not even look at it but it gives really nice organic prints so uh, as i said even if you don't have a backyard or a garden or whatever you can find something to print with almost everywhere it doesn't really have to be anything fancy um let me check how late is it okay i have half an hour left and i really want to show you um, the um, archival inks. So I'm going to do the archival inks now. I have some of the minis here also available at uh, Michael's. So these sets are um, 
from Rangeyard. And I also have some uh, that are the Distress Archival Inks. So it's not that they are Distress Inks, but they are matching with the Distress Ink colors. So if you have Distress Ink colors and you want a permanent ink to match it, you can use these Distress Archival Inks. And I, there are two important things I want to show you about printing with the uh, archival inks. And for one, I need uh, scrap paper that has no paint on it. And for the other one, I need some scrap paper that actually has a layer of acrylic paint already on it. And I will show you why. So let's pick some leaves again. And there we have the little spider again. Go back into the basket. I don't want you on my plate. Um, this one is maybe a little bit too big. Let's do something smaller. Uh, this is a nice one. Um, this is also a nice. Hey, Berta, while you're doing that, somebody asked, they really like the cases that your ink pads are in. Good yeah. storage, good organization. It is that the, the tints are actually from Ranger and they are, uh, they are especially made for the minis. So it's for the archival, uh, mini archival ink storage tin. And it, uh, I, I'm pretty sure that these are from Michaels. So okay. they uh, should be able to get them there. I don't like that one to go with that. So something like this, I think. So what I'm doing when I'm using archival inks, where did I put my brayer on here? Here it is. So I'm adding the archival ink directly to my uh, gel plate. And you have to be a little bit careful that you don't overlap because then you're contaminating your uh, ink pads. So you have to stay uh, around the edges of the of the other color. Not mess up your little um, ink pads. And this is a very random color combination, but <laughs> it might be fun. So now I'm really carefully going to blend these colors and I have to be careful not to over brayer it because then I will just brayer off all of the ink. So I have to do it very lightly and try to not brayer off all of that ink. It is a bit messy, but I think it's worth it. So I'm cleaning my brayer. Okay. And now I'm going to put my leaves on top. And first I'm going to do a print where I'm using um, a clean sheet of uh, scrap paper, pick up paper, cleaner paper, whatever you want to call it. So this side, I'm going to do it on this side. There's no ink, no paint, nothing on there. So I'm going to use that to remove the ink from the open areas. And if everything goes well, it will actually soak up all of the ink that's uh, around the leaves. So my plate is really, really clean. There's no ink left. This is my cleanup print. There's no ink left. And now I'm going to remove the leaves and 
print them on a white sheet of paper. And if I picked up all of the ink, the areas around the paper, uh, around the leaves should be white. There should be no ink on it. There we go. So it is as if the, it almost looks as if the leaves were stamped onto the white background. There's, there's a little bit of color in between. So if you really, really carefully remove the ink, you should be able to get a print where you can't, can't see any ink in between the leaves. And it really looks as if they were just put onto the, onto the white background. So now I'm going to do another one and I'm going to use slightly different colors because the fun part is that when you print with uh, ink, so the ink that's now on the leaves, it will stay wet for quite a while. So when I put this leaf with some purple and blue ink on top of, for instance, green ink, then I will add this color to my, to my future print, to my next print. So even though I don't put purple and blue on my plate, there will be some purple and blue in my print because it's just transferring from the leaf back onto the plate. So I'm doing some green and um, one of these other, another color of green. And also a little bit of that, what is it called? Paradise teal. Maybe some yellow, a little bit of yellow. And then I have to roll it out again, make sure that my brayer is clean because Obviously, the ink is also staying wet on the brayer a little bit longer. So you have to make sure that it's really clean. Otherwise, it will roll off and uh, mess up the color, the new colors that you put on the plate. So again, I'm going to roll out and blend these colors. And then I'm going to put these leaves back on here. So these are the leaves with the color on them that are not new leaves. And um, they will probably transfer some of that ink. And now I'm going to use a sheet, a pickup sheet, cleanup sheet that already has acrylic paint on it. Let me see one that is like really, has a really nice layer of, ink, of paint on it, like this one. So what will happen, um, acrylic paint is basically when it dries is like a plastic layer. So the acrylic paint will kind of resist the ink. It will not soak up the ink. Uh, the paper will not soak up the ink the way clean paper will. So instead of getting a white area around the leaves, you will get uh, some of that color still there, but much lighter than uh, how you put it on there. So the leaves are going to be more like color in color. It gets almost a kind of a frosty look when everything goes right. I'm not sure if I use the right color combination to really see it, but if not, I will do another one with a more contrast so you can see it better. Yeah, that worked. So it's more, I don't know if you, if it's like, uh, I don't see if it's like a really sharp um, image for you the way I'm showing it, but I'm, I'm just going to do another one like this with more contrasting colors. So it will get an even more uh, frostier look. What I'm aiming for is, let me see if I have one here that I can show you 
maybe I have a sample, then at least you get an idea. Uh, I think I have one in here in my little book. Let me see. So this is one that you can see that the white is like really white. There was no ink left on the plate. So let me see. So something like this. It almost looks as if it's like leaves uh, on the ground on a frosty morning, right? It looks as if there's like frost or ice or this one also. A really frosty feel to it. I'm just going to try that with the more, the cool colors, the purple and the teal. And maybe I'll put some pink in there. Let's put some pink in there. Fuchsia. Um, grayer. And I'm going to use the same leaves again and hopefully we'll get a little bit more of different colors in there. So basically, um, the longer you're printing, the more ink is on your leaves, the more uh, different colors you will get in one print. So again, I'm using the one with the acrylic paint. And removing the leaves. And I think I it feels as if this one is going to be better than the previous one. And I think I might just have enough time to also do a print with feathers. This is a little bit better already, but it will get better and better the more prints I make in a row, because as I said, you get more color in there. And um, so it will look more like the ones I just showed you in the book. Uh, let me see, like here you can see that there is a lot of different colors uh, in in the separate leaves. So they they were used for different prints with different colors. And then suddenly a color might show up like on this one has a lot of color in it that you don't expect in there. And now I made a mistake. And I don't know if you noticed it, but I just went printing on my no ink plate. And unfortunately now this plate uh, has to become an alcohol ink plate too, because you can see I just added the yellow a little bit here, there, and there in my previous print, and yellow is the worst color for uh, staining your plate, and uh, I will not be able to get the yellow off. It's still good enough to work with, um, with acrylic paint, but the thing is, even though it's not affecting your prints, and even though it's not... Um, the color is not coming off. When your plate is as yellow as the one as I showed you before, the colors you put on top, especially when you work with inks, don't look like the actual colors anymore. Because uh, when you work, for instance, with um, translucent paints, you can imagine that if I put a translucent pink on top of a bright yellow plate, that the pink will not look as pink. It will turn like something like orangey or something. So um, it is a little bit harder to, um, to see what colors you are actually using. But nothing can be done anymore. I've been too chatty and not paying attention well enough. And now it's too late. But let's at least do uh, a print with some feathers. So here's one with feathers that I made. And this is the same technique as the very first one that I showed you where I um, printed 
the paint from underneath the, the leaves in the open areas. Here I did it with the, uh, with the feathers. So I'm going to do a print like that uh, with acrylic paint. Let's find some. And I really like uh, my feathers that I print with to not be perfect because I want these these open areas and I want these imperfect uh, little bits because otherwise you get like a really solid, uh, really solid shape. And um, it looks more organic if it's a little bit like this. So um, let me see, colors, colors, colors. I'm using the deep permanent green and I'm using the Prussian blue, which is one of my all time favorite colors. Such a beautiful color. And maybe a little bit of the olive green on the side. Oh, and this is actually my cleanup paper from before, which I think looks really cool. Uh, I might add a couple more layers on that. Okay, I don't want to use my ink brayer right now, so I have to change my brayers. And I'm just going to roll out paint. And again, I'm trying to be a bit careful so I don't totally mix, mix up these colors into one new color, but get all the different shades in there. And I'm going to put these on top. And uh, I haven't mentioned it, but um, it's always best also with the leaves and with the feathers to use the, uh, the, the how do you say it, the, 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 the backside, it's not, you don't call it the backside, but the other side, so not the front, but this side to, to print because there are the, um, the, the veins, the thickest and will get you the best uh, details the same is with the feathers. So for this print, I'm going to line up my paper again because I want the details of the feather to print into the open areas of the background color. So here we go. And I want to really press into next to that. Um, I have no idea how to call this in English, but uh, like the leaf has the veins, there is this middle part of a feather. How do you call that? It's not like a bone or something, but it's not a I bone. But... I don't know. That's I don't know the answer to that. You don't know the answer. Well, okay, so it's not weird that I don't know. No. <laughs> so here you have the outline. And now we're going to print this part in there. So I'm going to line it up again. Oh, that's oh. a little bit. Okay, I'm... some people answered the question for us. It's either called, uh, I think it's called a rib. And then oh, somebody, okay. Nancy said the quill. Okay. Or the spine. I don't know. Okay. Well, so you have oh. to make sure that you really push it next to that spine or quill or rib or whatever it's called, because otherwise you will, your feather will not pick up the paint in that area. And then, uh, so you will get some solid paint here next to that and you don't want that because you want all the details but can you see how detailed it is how you can see every single um 
and again i don't know what it's called but i would say hair of that of that feather <laughs> all the little um yeah hairs <laughs> of the feather you can see i think it's amazing how uh how detailed a print like this is um and i have one here that uh, i wanted to show you which is also a cleanup print and uh so i did a couple of uh, feather prints and uh used the same cleanup paper a couple of times and then this is uh, what came out of it and i really really like this print and and this is something that i couldn't have made if i um uh, deliberately so it's just something that happens but um yeah i like i really like printing with feathers so let me see do i have time to do one feather print with uh archival ink is there time still time or oh, you, are have, you... you have three minutes <laughs> three minutes i think you That's... can go over a little yeah we can go over. okay i will try real quick um to do a feather print with archival ink um just to give you an idea but it, of course this works the same as with the leaves you get the same kind of prints you can use the same techniques that you that i used for the leaves you can also use them with the uh, with the feathers and you will get the same feel uh, of print and I think actually that the feathers need to have a little bit of acrylic paint on them to get a really nice archival print. But um, let's just try. So I'm going to do one more, one more print. And it's not exactly the same as I did before with the archival ink because now I'm uh, I'm going to print in the open areas as I did with the acrylic paint instead of removing the feathers before printing but let's see let's see I don't think I really lined up the paper so I'm also not sure if I get it completely in the right position but you will get you will get the idea ah that's pretty okay it's almost like um a negative a photo negative right i really like that okay so my time is up um let me remind you one more time for the upcoming classes. So July 25th is my uh, image transfer class, which is a premium class. And then um, on August 29th, I think it's 29, Marsha will be here with printing on fabric. And that's also a free class. Um, thank you so much for being here uh, today and um, joining my class. I hope you enjoyed it. And um, I hope to see you again next time. Have a nice day. Bye.